Hello, how's it going? Um, YouTube changed something. I was like, uh, YouTube, don't do that, please. <laughs> so I had to like retype the whole description and everything. I'm gonna have to edit it afterward. Um, I don't like changes like that. It makes me a little nervous. Hey, Hilly. I saw your comment on the intro video. I um, haven't been able to reply to it yet, but I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Good afternoon to you too. Let's see, I'm just kind of adjusting things here. I'm ready though. I'll let a few more of you guys get in here. How many of you were here? Like, did you guys come from Instagram? I just you see like nine people here already. Um, I'm making the Fairfield button up today. And let me know if the like lighting and sound is okay. Hey Michelle, how's it going? <laughs> welcome, welcome. I have made this before. Uh, a few, I've made a few of these. My husband really likes this shirt. Um, and um, it's his birthday this month, so I was trying to sew some menswear this month, this month in July. I wish I sewed more. But I do feel like it's more limited on what you sew for guys, you know? Hi, Allison. Hey, Terry. Woo, woo, Terry. Sew along. <laughs> awesome. How are you all? Do you have a good weekend? So lately, I've been working at home on Tuesdays, so it feels like I have a long weekend even though I'm working at home. Hey, Barbara. Nice to see you. I had a good weekend. I don't remember what I did, but it was fine. <laughs> Except, oh, Sydney, hey. So, um, I have I told you guys that my new place has prickly pear? Oh, okay, cool, Michelle, good for you. I do a lot of Instagram for my business, but I'm not on there much. Um, I'm always trying to like get that number down, you know? I don't know, you know. I'm not on Facebook, so at least there, there, I finally broke that. <laughs> hey, Ray. Thanks for your email this morning, Ray. It's such a scramble now because I have a tiny commute to get here. And um, yeah, so I don't get much to my computer stuff in the morning. I just try and get the stream set up and make sure. And I shipped some packages today. So, so my new place has prickly pear. And I've been kind of haunting my prickly pear, waiting for it to like show signs that I can harvest one and try it because I've never eaten it before. <laughs> and um, my husband was like, oh, did you see that those prickly pear on the, on the driveway are turning purple? And I like got up in the middle of dinner and everything. I was like, I'm going. And they were like, why don't you finish dinner first? But I was so excited. Um, and it was pretty successful. Like I, he, I like harvested them down without poking myself. I hold, held, used the tongs and held them over the burner and got all the little like prickles off, peeled it, tried it. It was pretty good. So I'm pretty excited. Hey, Penny. <laughs> Gosh, that's always a gamble, right, Penny? Like sometimes I'm like, all right, I'm not going to leave this with a mistake because I hate dreading coming back to a project if it has a mistake. You know, but then other times I'm like, I need a break. I can't look at you right now. So, <laughs> Allison, that's awesome. I didn't play quite that much, but I did play a fair amount of video games. <laughs> I just finished a, a game I've been waiting for for years. And so now I feel a little bit like, hmm, what else? And I've played it twice through already. I'm like, what, what can I play now? <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth. Right, Michelle, exactly. Yeah, you got this, Penny. Ray's right. <laughs> All right, so like I said, doing the Fairfield button up and um, I'm making it a short sleeve and I do have these two lines on here. Like, which one did I cut for my husband last time, you guys? I don't remember. I meant to grab his shirt and I totally forgot because I also think I shortened it. But other than that, I didn't do any alterations for this shirt for him. Um, and... I just know I probably shortened it, that's all. Hey, Noemi, how's it going? Good morning to you too. Are you on the West Coast as well? I know we don't have more, much morning, morning left here, so. <laughs> all right, and then um, I'm going to do the um, a shirt sleeve placket and cuff demo. I'm no expert, but I know how to do them. And I do them pretty good now, so. 
we'll do it together. I'll just do it on some scrap fabric that I have here and I'll sew that probably, I don't know how far we get on um, the first half of this shirt. I don't think I get that far on the part one. So I can't guarantee what day it'll be, if it'll be part one or part two, part two, Thursday or Saturday. Malin, hello. Nice to see you. Um, so we'll see, right? All right, so let's get cracking. So these I just need to do for the demo. Um, I'm not gonna do the sleeve tab. You don't want the sleeve tab, right? Hey, Derek, how's Scotland doing? <laughs> nice to see so many of you. I told myself I would look, I never look. I never look anymore. It just like, I forget. Yeah, YouTube did this weird thing. Oh, okay, Noemi, that's awesome. That's a beautiful area. That area is so California for me. Oh, cool, Derek. Yeah, it's a good pattern. I think it's a really good pattern. It's a very standard one. There's, um, I think the only uh, like option for different views besides like sleeve setups is that you can also do uh, some darts in the back. It is not a very boxy fit though. So unless you probably wear your shirts tucked in or you need a slimmer fit in general, because um, my husband isn't a big guy, this fits pretty good. It's not like a huge shirt. And I think that's partly why I likes it because um, some, he has pretty broad shoulders. He was a fencer, you know, like fencer for a long time, 14 years. And um, so his shoulders are pretty developed, but even though he's not a gigantic guy, you know, I don't know what the body, I don't want to body shame guys. I'm trying to like be nice to my husband here. He's perfect in my opinion, you know, but um, it is hard for him to find shirts. I think sometimes like that fit him through here and then aren't just gigantic, you know, so the lo that's right. The lockdown stomach version. So no darts for you. <laughs> We'll put some little, we'll slash and spread right there for you. <laughs> there is a tricky thing about this pattern, Derek, when you go to cut it out. Um, and I did do it incorrectly live on camera the first time I did it. And it's that she has you um, cut this out um, on the wrong side of the fabric. So if you don't do that, you'll end up with your shirt buttoning right over, right over left rather than left over right. So it's good to note that I totally forgot about that until I saw this. So the struggle is real. You know what I'm addicted to right now is is hot tamales. You know, the candy. I don't know if all of you have that. I know all of you aren't in the States. <laughs> right, Melania? <Yeah. laughs> Although I have to say, this dress is a little big, you guys. What happened? All right, so let's get these um, out of the way here, and we'll cut these at the end. Um, I have a couple weights here. Oh, I have three weights here. Okay. I just don't want those to fly off, so I'm just going to leave them there. So, yeah, so there's the different sleeve versions. So you can do the shirt, shirt sleeve placket. There is, like, a um, sleeve tab, so if you roll up your shirt and you like to button it, you can do that. Like that right there. Oh, sorry. Um, there is not a short sleeve uh, version. I'm just doing that because it's hotter than Hades where we live. So, someone actually was like, "Wait, is there a place called Hades?" I'm like, no. Yeah, Terry. It's a good thing to note. You know what I mean? All right. So I asked my husband. So this is my fabric. It's a yarn dyed. It's dark, dark brown. I know. I'm always picking these really challenging fabrics. But it has two right sides. It's really beautiful. I got this from um, Stone Mountain and Daughter in Berkeley. He picked this side. And uh, that's what I'll be doing. I, I uh, already washed it. And all I needed to iron was the edge. So that is promising. But you know, I'm wondering if I should think about matching these um, checks. Is there a rule <laughs> what size you have to match plaids? <laughs> um, 
Is it that way in the picture? Ooh. No, it's buttoned correctly. It is buttoned left over right. And she, she says right here on the front. In really huge writing. Cut one but placing on wrong side of fabric. So, um, I think, you know, and it's saying right front, this is your first clue right here. So that is, um, but is that the right front? This is the left front. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you see how this has this little thing right here? I have the worst hand, sorry. Um, you see that little like uh, tuck there? That is how you know that that is the correct, that is the one that goes on top because it'll have that fake um, pleat on the placket. It's not fake pleat, it's a real pleat, but it's the it's the simpler way to do that kind of placket because that placket actually, when you have this little, little pleat edge, I don't really see it in this, you can't really see it in this picture, but along this edge right here, there would be like a little pleat, right? And um, it, um, usually like the, the more complicated version, it would be a separate placket and it's this really cool folding thing. <laughs> I, I had to do it in college and I've probably done it one time since. It's definitely one of those better wear type of sewing. That's what they would have called it, better wear better wear not couture but like there's budget to better wear so oh that's good Terry yeah awesome Hilly yeah it's really fun huh it's like it's a nice way to like talk with other sewists as well long sleeve version in black oh perfect fed up with the top buttons <laughs> yeah <laughs> you need a new shirt <laughs> so let's see here I know it's a little dark, but you're going to see my pattern pieces on top, and that will certainly lighten up the camera. So, if this is the, this is actually, oh, this is so confusing how this is written. Yeah, so this is the left front, or, but it's shown wrong like it's not wrong I don't like calling patterns wrong because it's a complicated business but um, this is how you're gonna cut it out if this was your if your right side of your fabric is facing up and this is your left front this is right this is your left front and that's the right side of the fabric all right so if you don't want to be confused just cut this on the wrong side of your fabric hey Walter nice to see you <laughs> Yeah, he sounds pretty talented, Sydney, huh? <laughs> well, Michelle, I did miss it. So I make mistakes on here all the time. They'll tell you. I'm one of those um, people that um, I'll just I'll just fix it on the fly. You know what I mean? And I and I I don't. I know like for some folks that would just drive them like especially some so that just drives them crazy I've been doing this a really long time I feel pretty confident that I can figure something out if I do make a mistake um, but there's times where it doesn't work out so well and I do try and look ahead and and scout it out but I do try and do everything as uh, real as possible as far as like when I come to it all I make sure is I have like all the supplies and there's been a time a couple of times I didn't have all the supplies either yeah yeah right Beverly yeah yeah I did that because I think I had enough fabric that I could recut out one of his fronts and then I cut the placket off the other so I saved it but the crazy thing is, I don't think we realized this until I started, like the day I started streaming that day, after I cut it out. Or like at the end, right, you guys? I can't remember, it was like a year ago. So, um, so I'm on the wrong side of the fabric facing up, pattern facing up. This will give me a left front because we're looking at the wrong side. So if I were to lay down face on top of this, I would be wearing it correctly, okay? I love thinking about it a few different ways. It's like checking your math, you know, like doing your math backwards. Louise, hello. 
How are you, friend? How's it going? All right, so when I'm matching plaids, what I like to do, like this one, I'm not too worried about matching the color stripe. If I can, I will. But uh, this is a pretty small stitch design. What I'm gonna focus on is the stripes for sure. And what I do is I just pick one so that I at least have that kind of as a guide. So I'm putting my corner of one of my pattern, one corner, whether it be the bottom or the side or whatever, on one of those. And then I'm also gonna make sure it's on grain. And because this is a yarn dye, I'm gonna go by the um, yarn rather than the selvage. They should be the same, but you never know, so. You know, I, hi Ida, nice to see you Ida. How are you? Um, I think there are, Penny. I think, I feel like I have seen a full tummy adjustment and I, it might even be on the Thread Theory Designs. Like, does she have a blog or something? You guys, I don't visit pattern websites or anything. I don't even check for errata. I know. But I'm not sponsored. I do this for free, basically. <laughs> so um, I do this how I would do this if I were just sitting here alone sewing it, for the most part. So, All right, I'm just going to cut this out. I'm cutting this small. I'm using my new knife that someone sent me. Oh, boy. This knife feels so different than an Ulfa for me, so I've used those for so long. All right, so I'm gonna go like this. Get rid of all this. And then, um, do I have better scissors over here? Maybe these will be a little better. I'm gonna clip my notches here. I'm not gonna use the rotary knife since I, I'm not as familiar with this rotary knife, so. That's awesome. There's additional downloads with this pattern deck. That's cool. All right, so I'm gonna cut this out. When I have these weird little angles like this, I sometimes just do them in little sections and then pull up so that I can make sure it connects to what I'm cutting. Now I have these little divots. I don't really need the notches, but we'll put them in there anyway just in case my cutting wasn't that accurate. I guess the good news with this fabric is that if I cut it incorrectly, it is a reversible fabric. Doing blah, aw. Oh, you did, good for you. Oh, cool, Louise. She have a tip you like on there? That's cool. <laughs> All right. Oh, I need to mark the pocket. I'm sorry. Pocket. I like facing it, though. Um, I think, does this have a pocket on both sides? It just has one pocket. So if you want two chest pockets, I would use this pattern piece um, to do your pocket markings for both. And I would just line it up at the armhole shoulder on your other one. And then that way you can get pocket markings on both sides. All right, so I'm doing this small. Apparently I did not mark it last time since there are no holes in this pattern. Did I wing it or what? It's a small, small. What I don't like about this is I'm actually marking this on the wrong side. I should have flipped it over before I did this. Maybe I'll write a note to myself for next time. Oops. Because you need your pocket markings on the right side of the fabric. So let's just do this one more time so we don't have to do it at the sewing machine because it's a little harder at the sewing machine. You know? I really only like having like 
two, maybe three of these. Sometimes you just can't hit all four, <laughs> you know? Too much pressure. There we go. Oh, she folds. Oh, yeah, Louise. That can actually be really great because it, as long as the fabric's not too thick, I agree because then you're actually placing the fabric inside the collar the way that you want it to lay. Yay for winging it. <laughs> I mean, you know, winging it club, right? All right, so that is gonna hang up my pattern piece. I have a little bin too. All right, so we lined up that front. This whole uh, wrong side fabric, right front, left front, you cannot think about this too hard. You'll just drive yourself crazy. So do I hope this fold, I think this is my wash fold, so I'm not worried about it. You know, sometimes you just worry about that fold never coming out. So I try and avoid cutting on it sometimes. If it's for me, I don't worry about it, but when it's for someone else, you know. I think I did a blue, a blue, and it went, it's always the same. This is a one-way uh, pattern, though. Because, yeah, it's a one-way pattern, so I have to make sure I cut all my pieces going this way, right? Hi, Adina, how's it going? Welcome. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that, Louise, but it doesn't work on all fabrics. It has to be a pretty thin fabric, but you could do something like, you know, take like a weight and really press the fabric, you know, but like besides ironing it, like flatten it. Yeah. Because there's been times where I feel like when I clip that corner, all heck breaks loose, right? Like the fabric just kind of gets away from me and um I or I'm like not quite sure if I really want that 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 corner or that like collar especially um if it's the corner being sewn to the neckline and so I'll kind of leave myself open you know give myself some options but um then I have to be really you know precise so all right let's see here These are button markings, so I don't really need those. So I'm just lining up this edge. There's a stripe on the fabric, best I can here, and I'm lining up my little corner to that. And that is how I'm going to match my plaid. Of course they're gonna do um, landscaping here while I'm streaming. <laughs> if it gets loud, let me know. I can just shut the door. I hung up a vinyl curtain on my door. I can see it. If you can see it, this this is my door. Wait, right here. This is my door to the outside. This white thing here. It's light. And um, I hung up a vinyl curtain to at least let light in, but not let the air conditioning go out. You know. Oh yeah. Probably have to shut my door. I, my office is inside of a landscaper, so, you know, they got a landscape. All right. There are notches. Oh, I want these notches right here. There are notches. Um, you can't really probably see it, but there are notches here for your seam allowance. God, can you see that? She uses this little rectangle. It. Um, and there is an armhole notch. I don't need those. Um, I think if you have a lot of different seam allowances, um, or maybe you're stockpiling your makes, like you're cutting a bunch of things out and then storing them away, maybe you want to clip your seam allowance, but you have your instructions. My problem with clipping the seam allowance is if you don't clip it really shallow, you and when you go to sew you're gonna have a cut on your seam line right and that cut can give you a little bit of issues later on so 
you don't really need um, to notch your seam allowance. It is nice that it's a nice reminder visually while you're cutting it out, so. All right, so we have our two fronts. I'll leave this piece of fabric here and we will um, maybe cut some things from it, so. So what are you guys all working? I know what uh, Penny's doing. She's seam ripping. <laughs> what, are, what are the rest of you doing? this up. Is the yoke on the... No, it's not. I have sleeves. Sleeves, two yokes. I also apparently sew my yoke differently than how most people do. I don't do that burrito method. I'd never heard of that. The Breeder Method works great. I do not use it, but um, I will be doing something else. I don't even know what my method's called. I just made it up because I was like, I hated, because a long time ago you used to have to either choose your shoulders to sew as a sandwich or the, the yoke to the shirt as a sandwich, and then you would have to fold under the edge and top stitch it. And I hated not doing that very well when I was a beginner sewer. So I de developed a way to sew it all right sides together. So, you know, nice, Walter. <laughs> You're in good company. <laughs> Taking lunch break. Yeah, you, you really knocked it out the other day when you were kind of like, dang, what do I do next? Nice, Sydney. You sleeve, sewing a sleeve for, oh, cool. So you just finished a quilt or are you just finally getting it up, Barbara? Oh, the Donovan skirt. Nice, Mullen. You are productive. Nice, Terry. You just gonna watch today and hang out? Ooh, Derek, you making more masks? I've had some elastic shift and it, they make it sound like it's here, but I don't see it. Oh, cool, Ida. Did you use your new dress form? Your body double? I was just looking at the Cielo because it was in that, an email from Hearts, Beverly. I was like, that's the Cielo from the new, newly named closet core patterns, right? <laughs> hey Brookie, how's it going? I know this is this is so good. This fabric. If there's enough left over, I'll make napkins from it. So, ooh, a visor. You know you can buy visor material, but if you don't want to buy visor material. Where could you get something like that, I wonder? Okay, what I don't like about this, when I'm matching plaids and stripes, I don't like, um, I don't like patterns on the fold. I'm gonna cut this off here. And we're gonna move these before we chop them to little bits. I've never done that before. Oh, cool, Barbara. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Really, Beverly? That's cool. Hot Patterns Jiper Blouse. Oh, I haven't heard of Hot Patterns, but I feel like I've heard of the Jiper Blouse. I'm going to have to look at that hashtag. You know, funny story, Ray. Um, you may have heard me tell this before, but... See, so I'm gonna do the same thing, match my little corner on this blue line. And there's my fold line, not that wiggly. See, sometimes when you have these pieces on the fold, this is what I do with this. I make this really crooked so I don't accidentally put my cut paper on the fold. I've never done that before. Um. So a long time ago, before there were things called podcasts <laughs> and the internet was kind of a baby um, and audible.com was kind of new, This American Life used to be a subscription program on there. And um, when I had my daughter, or we had our daughter, I was one of my favorite radio shows and 
my husband is the quietest, most stoic guy, but he would get pretty chatty during This American Life. Maybe it was because the only time I shut up, right? Hi, Patty. Oh, you got a Montreux stop. Cool. That's awesome, Ida. Yeah, and, <laughs> and not only being cute on the form. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, I... Um, I would, my friends would kind of laugh because I'm like, why is he all of a sudden like chatty during every time this show comes on the radio? Because I couldn't, um, you couldn't listen to it again, you know, like it would play on the radio and that was it. You do, you got one shot, you know, like it's like TV before VCRs and stuff. But then Audible, I discovered Audible and that they did this subscription program and he got me a, my first Audible membership. But I swear, same same concept, right? Like, he only got chatty when that show came on. I hope he's not watching. <laughs> and I'm telling you, he probably only got chatty because I shut up or something. All right, so I'm putting that little pin so I can remember where to um, flip this. See my hand shaking? It's only when I want to be accurate. It's so annoying. I don't really like when I have to lift off my pattern and then pull the fabric. Some fabrics, you know, like say this was a rayon. I mean, you don't typically show sew this kind of shirt in a rayon. But if you had like a women's top or something, the um, fabric would be really hard not to get distorted, you know? Like it would be all over the place. Rayon is so loosey goosey, you know? My glasses are hurting me. Oh, really? Wait, okay. If you don't pre-wash before hemming, your stitch line is wider than the rest of the top because the thread doesn't shrink. So in other words, Okay, but I could flip that around. Some threads do shrink, like right, like sometimes they do. And if you if you don't pre-wash your fabric, sew it, and then you wash it, your thread and your napkin will theoretically shrink together, right? Yeah, right, Allison and Sydney. Yeah, yeah, I ugh, ugh I know. All right, I really don't want to make sure I don't cut down the center right now because it's really tempting. It's really tempting. I really like that when I flipped this over, that point landed right on the blue line. Yay! Okay. So. I'm excited about this whole napkin experiment. I know, it's so goofy. <laughs> But I am like, I have noodled on this conundrum for like decades. I have wondered about it. There are a few sciencey things like that that no one talks about that I wonder about. You know the other one I wonder about? You know like when you're driving down the road? Say you're driving down the road and there's a car coming towards you. And you're just driving, you're not looking to look at the person driving towards you or a passenger, but sometimes you'll look at each other and you know you looked at each other in the eyes like you made eye contact, right? You can tell when you've made eye contact, even if you can't see a very um, detailed, like you can't see minutely where what their eyes are looking at you can tell when they're not looking at you in the eye and then when you are. That is so, I want to know that science. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now you're going to notice it. Yeah, exactly, Patty. Yeah. Or Penny, sorry. Oh, your names. Yeah, exactly. The cell, that is nice because they take out one quotient of the hem. 
Yeah. I'm thinking using this kind of fabric is going to be my, is going to be key. All right, so we've got our back. Hello. Oh, shoot. Hi. Right. The mini scary. Thank you. You can just throw Do you need me to sign anything? No, nope, this last thing. All right, Duffy. Duffy? Okay. Have a good day. <laughs> you guys could have told me someone was walking in there. It scared me. All right, what am I looking for? I'm going to look up that Jaipur blouse, too. Yeah, me too, Adina. <laughs> exactly. I feel like, especially if you're feeling lumpy, rayon is so great for smoothing out lumps. Yeah. All right, so I'm wondering, can I get either my yoke here? I can, barely. Let's see. Because he's a small, I can. Yeah. Or my sleeves. I can get both. Cool. I think doing my sleeves here is a better use of fabric because it uses it up. Uses it all. You're right. I did jump. <laughs> Usually I can hear people walking up the step. There's two steps. You know? He was stealthy. <laughs> Who has a lot of patterns on sale, Michelle? The hot patterns? Is that what it was called? Wait, yeah, hot patterns, right? Okay, so um, I'm gonna cut these out individually because um, of matching the plaid. I'm gonna cut, fold this down. And I'm going to I'm just gonna draft a little hem shape here. I do this a lot. I'll explain. I didn't explain last time I did it, but I will this time just in case anybody's new here. But um, so uh, if I'm going to fold this up and make a short sleeve, I really need to make up the difference between here and where this is going to land up here. And look, there's my fold. I think this this is my line. Yeah. All right, but I need a ruler. Oh, here we go. Oh, really, Louise? Okay. Easy wearing and breezy. I know what it is. It's the braids. The braids are interfering with my glasses. Hmm. Let me think about that, Sydney. All right. So I'm gonna extend this hemline here at the bottom. So I have a nice straight line and then I'm gonna find where this is folding up to but this is kind of a wide hem I don't think I want that wide of a hem I think I'm gonna do inch and a quarter right here and so inch and a quarter up it's right here so this point right here is going to end up right there and that's how I get this little wing right here one and a quarter I make sure it's right angles one and a, wait this is my one and a quarter okay wrong line I'm getting confused with that original line there like that I'm using removable tape, so it won't really, I can just pull it off later. There we go. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Derek. This was my, a couple years ago, or maybe more, I was like, this is the hairstyle I'm going to master this summer because I am so hot you know I usually have long hair and I and I get it gets so hot here and I a lot of times will wear two buns right here but I wanted another option and I have to have my hair against my head otherwise I get an instant headache like I can't wear ponytails or buns or anything like that unless it's attached to my head 
or low profile. And like this, the weight of my hair sits on top of my head, which is great. But I cannot figure out this hairdo and I wish I knew what it was called so I could Google it because when you start looking at hair videos on YouTube, holy heck, what a rabbit hole. And then I'm like, and what people go to, go the lengths they go to to do some of the styles, I'm like, no, 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 I can't do all that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Plus it looks painful. <laughs> all the little rubber bands they use and mm -mm. so I had luck today getting this to work but sometimes it doesn't but it's comfortable and I like it all right so here's one sleeve and then I'll have to remember to flip it for the um, other one make sure I try not to cut on my fold here I can always tape it back to the pattern if I do I hate it when I don't cut it and I start pulling it away. I'm like, no, it's all getting distorted. You know? This cutter. I, I Do I look awkward or what? All right, so now I'm going to notch my sleeve, my armhole, because I do like what why is this way over here oh probably because of the yoke okay uh i just need to know which is the front and which is the back of my sleeve that's all <laughs> is it dutch braids the old style beehive isn't that a lot of hairspray just once <laughs> Yeah, it is a very dry heat, so there is that going for it because um, it's not humid here. That's for sure. I am thankful for that. That's why we can handle it, honestly. I just laid this on my um, fabric. It's easier and more accurate when you're matching plaids, you know. Dutch braids, thank you. I'm looking that up. There better be an easy way to do it. <laughs> Stop it. I had this gal once. Oh, wait, I need to notch this. I, when I was on a walk with my friend Kathleen in the park here, which is like, there's a massive park here. Massive. Um, and um, we were on a on a walk in the park. Is that my notch right there? I think it is. Wow. Um, and I had I had my hair in braids. It was longer, so I just had two braids, and I was just on a walk, you know. And this woman walked up to me and she said, "Oh, are you Heidi?" And I said, um, "Oh, are you looking for someone named Heidi? Are you trying to meet someone? Because I'm not Heidi." And she was like, no, I'm, you know, I'm talking about your braids. Are you Heidi? <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's a little passive aggressive. <laughs> Who walks up to someone in the park and shames them for wearing braids? <laughs> I was like, okay. I was like, no, not Heidi, bye. <laughs> See you later. I don't like strangers. Stranger danger. <laughs> she looked so sane at first. <laughs> All right, now I need new uh, two um, yokes. Ooh, look at all this leftover fabric. Hubba hubba. Oh, Adina, it just takes practice. You know what, Adina? This is one of my tricks with cutting with a rotary knife. It's the same with sewing. I look where I want to go. Unconsciously, sometimes you look at where your blade is, but if you look ahead of where you're going, your hand will naturally go towards that, and you've got to trust yourself and I think also not going too slow I know right it was really weird I did not know her no and I thought she was looking for someone named Heidi like she like she was meeting someone new in the park you know like maybe they were running buddies and they wanted to meet in person or I don't know it was really weird and my friend Kathleen thought nothing of it but I was like 
And it really stuck with me. At first I was like, oh yeah, okay, whatever. And I was like, why did that bug me? Cause I'm not, I'm not overly sensitive and I'm not overly like harsh or critical or judgmental, but it bugged me. And I was like, why did that bug me? And then later on I realized she was shaming me for wearing braids. <laughs> what a weird thing to focus on. <laughs> okay, two braids overlap are milk made braids. Okay. Best advice was that you try to teach muscle memory in your hands, right? Yeah. I can only French braid my own hair, Beverly. I can't French braid my daughter's. Not that she, what, she would make me try and it would always be bad. Oh, you're gonna try the Moon and Broad Nula Bar cami dress. So that's a tank dress? Cool. One braid, Dutch braid. Yeah, I don't have enough hair for that right now. I cut a ton off at the beginning of summer. Milk made braids. Okay, I'm looking. I'm looking, you guys. All right, so um, I need two of these yokes. Two of these yokes, but one does not need to match perfectly. So we can cut two at a time, except it's on the fold. Now, I could do this on the bias for some interest, but it'll look a little wavy, you know? <laughs> I'm not lightning fast. Remember when I was a new live streamer, you guys, and I would get people commenting on my blade? They would get upset that I would leave it open. None of your business. <laughs> I don't even know where I left the blade. Oh, there it is. This isn't my usual blade. This is, this, one of these is, but someone very kindly sent this because they knew I had hand issues. What was going on there? And um, they were like, hey, why don't you try something new? And it's so smart. That was really smart that they gave me a new blade so I change up my hand position and it has been good. It's been good, you know, so. I like that you're distracting me. I do this to be with you guys. <laughs> you guys are ever so helpful though, you know. I already know what to look for for the braids. I didn't even think about calling them like, why isn't this staying now? I think I'm pushing it. Because you can't pull this back to undo it. It's this, right? I think I'm touching this by accident. So if you were left-handed, this wouldn't work for you. Note. Yeah, so, oh, it, you know, okay, so Sydney, the pr prickly pears, I have like three open tabs on my computer about prickly pears right now. And um, they can be very syrupy sweet and it tasted very familiar. My husband was like, oh, I've had this. This is a, tastes really familiar. And then like the prickly pear candy came, it like popped into his head. So he's like, maybe someone gave me that as a kid. Someone gave me jelly. It's it's good. It's just sweet and um, you can you can eat it at varying degrees of ripeness because it's edible in all the states of ripeness. So it can be sweet and and kind of like light like this was lightly sweet and not completely to that really syrupy sweetness because people say it can be really overwhelming too yeah yeah oh you have a pink and rotary blade i have one of those i do have oh okay i have enough hair for that okay that would be nice because getting them even is <laughs> all right let me cut this out I don't think I need to match this, right? Because it's got the pleat, so it won't match. All right, so we're gonna, I'm looking at my black line under there. So as long as I'm like, let's do this orange line right here. And I'm gonna line it up on the blue line. Looks like I got a little rotary happy here because I could see this is the line and I went up a little. So <laughs> we'll kind of fix that this time. All right. Oh, this feels better now that I tightened that screw. 
I do always recommend, um, like, if you're not under a camera, you can probably keep your work to the left of the blade or against the blade if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, you know, to the right of the blade. I think it's really good to always keep what you're cutting in view with the blade there. On the back side, you can't see the blade as much because you have this. Same with this, you know, if you have your blade out. If you have your blade out, you can't see that because of the back side of this. So it's more accurate and safer that way. Um, and if you can shift it around. So, you know, if you, I think um, pinning your stuff and using a rotary knife, as long as you're careful about those pins because you don't want a rotary knife one, that might help you get a little faster as well because you can keep it really anchored down and you can move it around on the table. You know what I mean? And you know, you don't have to use rotary knives, you know, like if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. It doesn't matter what you use, What you do whatever you want. I know plenty of people that just use scissors and that's great. When rotary knives came along, it was really good for me. It, it was a lot better. I use a, scissors for cutting out patterns a lot though. I do feel like I'm really awkward on this, this knife. Okay, I'm gonna mark the center. And there's a notch here, here. And here. I don't really need to notch probably both yokes, just the one that the out the shirt's gonna go to. Aqua de Jamaica. Ooh. <clears throat> Yeah, I think the real Serpili, yeah, it's a nopales, exactly. They're called tunas in Spanish. What are? And grow on the nopales. Yeah, so Brooke, I've seen nopales like in a restaurant. And I was thinking about it like in relation to like how there's like um, the green papaya salad and Thai dishes, you know? So, ooh, okay. Yeah, they are like dried. Okay, yeah. Also for WFH sewing. <laughs> What's WFH again? Yeah, right. They did. <laughs> I well, you know, Derek, it's. It can be faster, and I think um, if you're using weights, it works really well because you're cutting straight up and down, so it can be more accurate sometimes. Um, if you're doing like, I think like rayon, it's six of one, half dozen of the other. I can, I feel like it can be more a little easier to tame the rayon if you don't have to pin it because pinning it, then you're lifting it up every time, and it kind of shifts around. And rayon is just oh. You know, but um, on the other hand, um, it may feel more secure too. So, the prickly pears are called tunas. Oh, yeah. I have thousands, Brooke. <laughs> we have at least three prickly pear cactuses, and they're huge. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. So it's just a mislabeled thing. Oh. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't lift the fabric, so it's more accurate. That's why I like it. And it's faster. Like when you're working somewhere like in a design room with people and you're cutting out things all the time, it's, it's really nice to be able to cut things out pretty quickly. And there's not usually pins allowed in a factory. Even in the design room, sometimes they get weird about it. Not always, but sometimes. I've worked one place where they were just like, no pins are allowed in the building. They clearly had had an issue with pins before I got there, and I was like, okay. So. Yeah, because when you lift, when you use scissors, you're lifting up the fabric. 
And this and it is really nice. See, I've gotten away from what, the reasons why I like doing it. It's just nice that, you know, if, with some good weights, you know, you can just press down and it, keep, and it keeps it nice and accurate as long as you have a good setup, right? Like if you're sitting, if you're kneeling on the ground at your house, you know, on a carpeted surface, that may not work, you know, and I, and I um, think like you just got to do what works best for your situation, you know. I'll send you some um, prickly pears, Brooke, if you want. <laughs> That's legal to do, right? Um, grain line. Grain line, grain line. Okay. And I need a pocket. Can any of this work? Let's see. Will any of this work? Because look at this nice big piece I have. Nope. 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 No. No, okay. Well, we checked the scraps. <laughs> they didn't work. <laughs> I, um, I saw, is it Thanks I Made Them makes fabric weights? They're really cute. Pretty sure it's Thanks I Made Them on Instagram. So that's a good Instagram handle, eh? Yeah, right, Terry? Do you mean like, um, like you cut the left front and the right front? I mean, most men's shirts are like that. Even the Archer, I think, is like that. I'm just looking at the lines. Okay. I need two of these. I wish I would have laid down two so I don't have to cut two separately. I think it's always good to invest in weights that are heavy. I don't know what notch I needed. Oh wait, I'm gonna go by what I notched last time. Okay, you need your shoulder. Your center back, your shoulder, and I'm looking at what I notched last time, hoping that um, that was the right one. I can see it. Kosha Neal does? No. Really? Wait, I thought Kosha Neal was snails. Oh, really, Mom? Oh, chalk paper. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, I kind of, I kind of um, came about sewing in that era as well, but I think in the high school setting, they definitely let some of it slide because it was just so much work to teach so many students, you know, at once. But they were really picky about their own thing, like, right? Every teacher had their thing that, is there two green lines together? There are, okay. Which one do I want? Wait, I'm gonna go by this orange one so I can keep it straight, sheesh. Oh, it's a scale insect. Why do I think of cochineal as being a s snail? Am I thinking of the um, the way a, um, what do they call it? a fossil looks like? Ooh, escargot. <laughs> well, I know they're tiny. So it must take a lot to make a dye. Brooke is a natural dyer. She naturally dyes yarn. My favorite yarn. Oh, nice, Adina. 
That sounds like, um, didn't Nancy get something like that? That's pretty smart. I like that. You learn from your mom, Molly? All right. Is there really a notch right here? Do I usually put a notch right there? I don't think so. All right, I'm hating that I'm doing this sideways. Let's just pick it up. I'm, it's, I'm making it awkward and it, and it doesn't need to be this awkward. <laughs> All right, we have our collar. I wonder if that's a narrower seam allowance. I feel like uh, she uses a, a smaller seam allowance than the rest of the shirt, which I am down for. Yeah. Yeah, having the third hand, that's pretty smart. Marex Purple is from the Aquatic. Yeah, yeah, Brooke's an expert. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. See, if someone else around me is an expert, I just leave it to them, and I just, you know, unfortunately stay too ignorant. <laughs> Staff Brooke. <laughs> All right, I want my bit of weight on this. Mm. So I heard from um, Hearts, and um, I think we're getting a couple new patterns soon. We're gonna do a Style So Me pattern. It's gonna be really cool, perfect for autumn as well. And then a, um, I'm, I'm reminded them that we're kind of interested in the Hudson pants. So she was like, oh yeah, the Hudson pants. They've been so busy. I don't need that notch right there. It, it's nice to know your halfway point, but it's not necessary. All right, this I'm gonna keep with this so I know which one's the top and which one's the under collar. So, um, this one right here is the under collar, and that just means that it is probably slightly smaller, or you could look at it the other way. This one's slightly bigger. And that way, when you sew it together, it's going to pull the outer, the top collar to the underside a little bit. Um, that way, um, you don't have any seams kind of creeping up onto the top, right? So, oh, very interesting, Brooke. That's pretty cool. Did you see them? Did you go to, you didn't go to Oaxaca. Wait, where, you, you were in Oaxaca. Wait, where were you? <laughs> I can't remember where you were now. I'm trying to think about your trip. I think I'm getting your trip confused with another trip. That's so funny. You know, it was funny today I was thinking, I was getting low on something that I have to order like a, a bathroom thing and I was like oh but I have one in my travel in my travel bag but I'm like you vowed you would never steal from your travel bag that way it's always intact I'm like yeah but I'm not going anywhere <laughs> so maybe I should use it it's just like a, a um a mega babe thigh chafe stuff so when I wear like skirts and dresses you know but I was like, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. But then I could, I could actually keep it for my, my go bag and hopefully never need it. All right. I doubt I'm going to be worried about thigh chafe if there's a fire, though. <laughs> let's be honest. All right, let's match this, though. Okay. Let's match our pocket. Because a good invisible chest pocket just can't be beat, right? So this is the right side. Oh, but not to the coast. Okay. Oh, I'm glad I'm not remembering that wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think fabric stores are doing really fine. 
Yeah, right, Michelle? I know. It's so funny, like, when I talk to people in other parts of the country or even the world, and I'm like, oh, I just finished lunch. Oh, what'd you have? It's usually Mexican food of some sort. And I've literally had to explain, like, what a burrito is. I'm like, I can't even imagine a world without a burrito. <laughs> you know, like, that's just, like, it's so... That's our food. All right, so these um, are going to be on the inside of the pattern. See, look at that. They're well inside the pattern, right? And we have this nice big hem. So even if we just get this pretty darn close to about where this is, it's gonna look pretty good. All right, where's the blue? There's the blue line. All right, so we know we want our pocket. This is how I'm doing it. Let's see, can I move this over more? Um, I think I can, yeah. Let's move this over a little more. Barely, okay. I can barely get it there. All right, there's one, and there's one. Wait, wait, don't take the silly goose. Silly goose? Okay. So we know that's the top of our pocket. And so we'll um, be able to maybe do this, right? And something like that. And then you won't even need really the um, pins at all because you'll be using the plaid to match, which is kind of nice. It's like a helper, you know? Plenty of fabric. If it isn't quite right, I can always cut another one until I get it the way I want. our whole shirt. We're going to cut out a trial. Ooh, I can make lots of napkins from this. Do you think that would be weird to have a shirt and napkins in the same fabric? <laughs> oh, see, that's, that's smart, Terry. Ooh. Do I want to do that? You know, the other thing I could do, you guys, is you guys got to remember, remind me, I'm going to use the other side of the fabric for the yoke. And I could use the other side of the fabric for the pocket. So it would look like um, this on there. What do you think? Oh, gosh. That's really hard for you guys to see. But let me see if I can brighten it up. It's so dark. Oh, God. My kingdom for better cameras. I'm just going to brighten this up so you can see a little bit better. It doesn't really show how dark the brown is, but you know, I could do the pocket on there. It blends in a lot better in person. It does look a little bit standout-ish. Hey, Linnea, how's it going? <laughs> I, you know, I don't know why, but my keyboards um, on my computers now, the new ones I have, they, I make so many typos. It's so frustrating. It's so, it, I, it's so frequent that people in streams know about it. That's how bad I am. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Louise. Maybe for the yokes, but not the pocket. Okay. Right, Adina? I don't know. You don't think my husband wants a tank top in this? <laughs> it's only weird if he wears a shirt to dinner, and then I see him like... <laughs> that my daughter would do. 
I'm giving her a hard time. Oh wait, what is this? What is this? Oh, this was that centerpiece I was supposed to be using. Dang. Oh well. All right. So I need to do interfacing and I need to do this sleeve here. Um, and I just did this a uh, short sleeve for this shirt, but we're gonna do a we're gonna do a sample of the sleeve pocket as a separate little demonstration. Right, Adina? Yeah, totally agree. I love bias stuff. I feel like the solution to a lot of things is bias. Okay. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to, who am I doing this for? It's not just for you, Terry. Wasn't it, um, who was it? Was it Diane asking? Oh gosh, Sydney, yeah. That's so weird. <laughs> awesome, Linnea. I know, you know, I think like sewing menswear is so great, you know? It's so great and I, um, there's just not enough menswear patterns, but um, one of the viewers, um, his name's Zach, he emailed me and he said that there's a lot of free patterns and I, there might be some men's and I think it was sewingpatterns.org. I keep meaning to get that link for you guys. You asked for the cuff. That's what, it was Louise. Yeah, you asked for the cuff. But you, you need the cuff, not the placket. Yeah, 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 we'll do that. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this, I'm just gonna cut the bottom part out. Um, the other thing I was thinking is we could do this, this shirt in, um, flat fell seams, right? That would make it last for two parts too because <laughs> it's double the sewing. All right, so this sleeve has a pleat. Oh, let's cut that. See, I'm not as accurate with this one. Plus I'm right-handed. Pleat, pleat. Go straight up. Don't be shy about that. Do that while you have the pattern all pinned and everything. Doing this on your sewing machine because you're nervous to cut this, um, just cut it. It's gonna be fine. You can trust that. It's the one slit you make into a garment that actually um, is totally fine. I know that it's nerve wracking, I promise. <laughs> a simple camp shirt pattern. Well, wasn't the Granville Wait, for men or women? Oh, for your, for your, for a man. Um, I don't know. Have you looked at the Thread Theory website? I love flat belt seams. Camp shirt is like a button down, but it doesn't have a collar stand. So the collar, like the collar um, will be a little bit deeper and it folds over so it's a convertible collar that's what they call that um and then um it is looser and boxier it's gonna probably have a vent on the side you know a slit not a shirt tail hem think of a hawaiian shirt right i'm right right a hawaiian shirt in style is uh, very similar to a camp shirt so yeah, shirt sleeve, boxy holiday shirt, there you go. <laughs> All right, so we have this. This is my sleeve, right? I don't wanna lose it, Let's put it in there. I don't know if this is the right or the left. I think that this is, the, I think I need to do this face down. But, you know, I'm going to do it right side up because typically your pattern piece should go, I'm going I'm to trust, trusting. 
She really put a lot of lines on this pattern piece to aid in sewing, so that's pretty helpful. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I actually don't know of a um, pattern off the top of my head. And I, I feel like I really don't know a lot of men's wear patterns except for Thread Theory. She's got a lot of pressure to make a lot of men's stuff. I'm going to keep that pattern piece with that because um, that will be helpful. And then we need a couple of cups. I have my patterns hanging up there. A granddad collar. Oh, what's a granddad collar? If you use a, a tracing wheel like this with the really sharp, sharp, sharp tines here or spines, um, you can put a piece of paper underneath your garment and it'll put holes on the paper so you can trace can you see that? You can, tr it's really obvious for me, but you can trace see those holes there. I don't know if you can see that. But you can trace the seams of your garment without hurting it. If the fabric is really delicate, though, you got to be careful with that thing. It's pretty gnarly. Hi, Jan. How's it going? Oh my gosh, you guys, and your, I don't even know the simplicity patterns. Oh, that's a good idea. Look at Textilia or uh, PatternReview.com. Dang, I forgot about those sites. Thanks, Walter. And you might be able to find a men's camp shirt. <laughs> the Breeze shirt on Twig and Tail. I haven't sewn one of theirs either. God, there's so many pattern companies. I wish I would have laid this upside down so I didn't have to go backwards here. This is a, uh, it's rare to see a curved cuff, so that's kind of fun. I always cut this weird junk off my, off my scraps. And I just keep this in a bin here next to my table of things I can do samples with or <clears throat> interfacing and here's this is what I use for interfacing I used to use um, cotton poplin yeah textilia and pattern review there you go Barbara's found one alright so I need black kit under collar and interfacing and so it looks like she has separate pattern pieces for her interfacing and her pattern pieces and so look at that it's barely different snazzy um i will probably knowing that i might just i'll use her patterns um because i'm not using a fusible if you're using a fusible that is kind of nice that it's kind of graded away from the seam line the edges the cut edges let me speak correctly but um i'm using fabric so i just need to make sure that it'll make it this is the wrong grain line though i don't think that'll be a big deal but Let's see if i have i'm getting kind of low on my interfacing so i may have to use this piece I don't want to use my lining that I got, my white lining. Yeah, <laughs> it takes to, yeah, that's a rabbit hole. <laughs> I love that site. I really need to post more of my makes on there. I wish like that's, that is the person I need. I need the person that wants to like take everything I've made and sewn with you guys and put it on there and link it, you know? That would be so nice. I did work really hard yesterday and updating all, I think I did all the streams from this year. 
And so I linked in the description of every video to the spot that where you can find all the videos. That took me hours, you know? And that was only this year. I'm only halfway through one year. So if I have to do next year, I mean last year, <laughs> I can't do next year. Um, oof, that's gonna take me like solid day or more of just sitting there hosting links. But it's so satisfying and I'm so glad because now you can look at a description of a video and if it's part one, you'll find a link to where all the parts are listed and it makes it so much better and easier for folks to find part two if it doesn't get suggested. So, worth it. Color stand cut two. Cut two interfacing. I think I'm just gonna cut one. Two might be a little too thick. got a little off right here I was thinking like oh I'm cutting a little fast but it's going okay and right when I thought that it um, didn't go okay <laughs> all right don't really need the pattern pieces I just need Yeah, I just use, um, I, don't, I don't have anything against fusible interfacing. I just don't tend to use it. Um, it's not really that old, so I don't feel bad about it. <laughs> I, that, like this right now that I have is leftover, like if you order fabric on Spoonflower, sometimes, like when we used to order 90 yards of a print on Spoonflower, <laughs> I think that that was really close to a full roll for them. So they would just include a couple of yards of the poplin unprinted. And I'm still using some of that. I'm almost done with it. Um, but you can get like just broadcloth or what were we talking about the other day? Batiste was, what did we think Batiste was? Or just a poplin or something like that. You know, and I just pre-wash it and I have it sitting around and it's really useful, you know. <laughs> Sydney. You know, Sydney, um, have you tried Trello for that? Because um, I use Trello to organize my patterns. And I find it really helpful, like, if I'm at the fabric store. Because, you know, I don't bring all my patterns, right? And sometimes I go there for something specific, but then they get new fabric, and I'm like, oh, that would work for that pattern I've been looking for fabric for. But I don't have the pattern with me, and sometimes the Internet's not that great in the back of a fabric store. So if I go on Trello, I have it really simply. I do not spend a lot of time on it. I take a photo of the front of the pattern envelope, the back of the envelope, and I title it, and that is it. And then I put it in its category of, like, tops or bottoms or men's or children's and then um, I have the envelope and I can look at the envelope to see what size and yardage I need yeah yeah right Allison me too and sometimes it does like if you go to a fabric store that hasn't sold it in a while hasn't gotten any new stuff yeah oh there you go look at that Louise thank you look at that Beverly do you see that Fold line blog for Great British Sewing Bee Episode 2, Season 6. They listed a bunch of beach or camp shirts. Yeah, you haven't kept up with it. I know, me either. I'm, I'm behind on my patterns. I'm just behind enough now that I'd have to figure out what I have and what I don't have. And when I, when I, especially because like, I'm really good about it digitally. Because if you've ever seen my video on how to print a PDF pattern, I show you, I literally have a folder that says to print. So when I buy something, I put it in the to print pile. <laughs> and then that way I know those haven't been added to Trello probably. Oh, Textilia has a summer. Ooh. Yeah, because Textilia is trying to be the Ravelry for sewing. You just got to find something that works, right? And you want to keep up with it. 
I like Textilia too because of um, she's just got a good story, and um, I like who she is. You know, she's got some good standards. She's been dealing with some pretty serious medical issues the last couple of years, ever, at, right after they launched Textilia. So my heart goes out to them. So largely, I think, like, they've got a couple of people helping them, but I think a lot, of, a lot of it's volunteer right now. I have a cute shirt, a Textilia shirt. I really love. <laughs> I love wearing it. It's red, and it has the a little sewing machine on it. It's their logo. Their logo is really great. <laughs> I love that shirt. All right, so... Are you guys ready? We're going to sew this tomorrow. Fairfield button up. I mean, did he take a nap in that or what? <laughs> you got to love it. <laughs> it's the now, babe. You're really taking a picture of me now. <laughs> but I love that. Let's see. Allowance. What is, let's look at the seam allowance now. Before I ask you guys, what's the seam allowance on this? Well, I don't see the seam allowance. I, finally, someone who tested my pattern last time said, you write the seam allowance a little too much on your patterns. <laughs> I was like, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> All right, it's here somewhere, right? Where is it? All right, well, I guess I'll look this up. It just says it's included. All right, well, I'll look it up, so. Right, exactly, Sydney. I like that. No, I actually really love that it looks like it's the end of the day, you know? That's, I like it when people on Instagram are like, I didn't post a picture of this make yet, and it's at the end of my work day, but look, it's still looking pretty good, you know? I like this. Three eighths? No. It better not be three eighths. I want my money back. It better be half inch or more. I can't do flat filled seams with three eighths. Why didn't I think of that, Terry? That notch on the on the side seam looked like it was at half inch. I may have to surge this one. That makes a faster shirt though. The collar is a quarter and the neckline is a quarter. I like that. I think it's half inch, except for the neckline and the collar. It's a quarter inch. All right, well, um, I'll figure it out by tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks for coming, you guys. Um, and I'll be sewing part one tomorrow and part two Saturday. I don't think I have any streams next week because I'm gearing up for August. I have a lot of things I'm trying to get ready for August. It'll be my stream anniversary that month. Exactly, Brooke, me too. Yeah, I think it changes too, but I saw I saw that three eighths too. Yeah, I'm the yoke here. You're right. You're right. It might be on this yoke only though. Where's the side seams? Where's the side seams? Um... Oh, see on the, um, oh, but Terry, look at on page 16, it says, the seam allowances are as follows, shirt back and sleeve back one quarter inch, shirt front and sleeve front five eight. so we are doing flat felt seams, that'll be awesome. All right, I think you're right, I think it changes, I'll have to write these down. Oh, I'm glad, Linnea. Am I saying your name right? Is it Linnea or Linnea? I've known both. <laughs> I may not remember. Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Um, except we'll be at my sewing machine. And, um, yeah, it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I always love making shirts like this. It's kind of, This is my favorite kind of garment construction. I really like constructed things with top stitching. Oh, I need brown thread. I have brown thread, though. So, all right, you guys, hasta mañana, iguanas. I'll see you. I'll see you later. Bye.